fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi yo silver, the Lone Ranger. When the masked rider of the plains led his courageous fight for justice in the early days of the western United States, he never forgot the great American principle that all men are equal before the law. The Lone Ranger's justice meant justice for all men, regardless of race or creed. And it was this principle that led him into one of his most exciting adventures. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for Stillwater. Saddle's waiting on the trail ahead. Hi, Silver. Away. Our story begins in the town of Stillwater. The Lone Ranger, carefully disguised, is standing at the bar of the cafe, listening to the conversation of a group of men. Among them is the sheriff, Charlie Dodd, and... No, sir, fellas. I'm frank to say it's got me beat. Charlie, uh, how many is there missing so far? Mm, Fifteen or twenty, I reckon. Ain't that about it, Brad? Must be, sheriff. Just think of it. Twenty Chinamen disappearing into thin air. No trace of where they're going to. Pardon me. Oh, howdy, stranger. I was just noticing you standing there. Care to join us in a drink? No, thank you. I was just interested in what this man said about there being no trace of the Chinese who disappeared. You're right. No one's found a sign of them. I'm wondering if anyone's looking very hard. <laughs> Maybe there's something to that, stranger. They were all men employed by the railroad and the construction camps, weren't they? Uh-huh. And where the railroad got all them coolies, I don't know. I heard they're bringing them into Frisco by the thousands. There's ships coming from China that's got coolies loaded in so thick they're like to bust the hatches. They're good workers. And it doesn't cost the railroad much to keep them. <laughs> that's sure the truth. Keep them in grub and pay them almost nothing and promise that in case they die, they'll be shipped back to where they come from to be buried. And that's all they ask for. They're supplying just what this part of the country needs at present, however. Manpower. Labor that will push the rails eastward across the mountains to meet the rails being built westward. Yeah, I suppose that's right. But what's that to you, stranger? Merely that I believe they're entitled to the same protection others receive. Ain't they getting it? You can't say they are when almost every week more disappear and no clue is ever found as to what's become of them. Oh, uh, this is the doggondest thing. Now, don't get me wrong, stranger. Because them coolies are different from you and Brad Newt here don't mean I wouldn't be willing to do my best for him. I give my word to uphold the law, and I'll do that same, no matter what. But like I was just saying, this is the time I'm stumped for fair. You've looked everywhere? Me and Brad here haven't missed a square foot for miles around. Brad's your deputy? That's what I am. I wonder... Yeah? 
Have you been in Apache Valley? Huh? Apache Valley? Say, stranger, are you local? Ain't you heard about that place? I've heard a number of things. Mister, I wouldn't go in that valley for all the gold you could give me. Not unless I get to hankering for sudden death, I won't. Has anybody been there recently? When was the last time, Brad? Don't you remember? It was more than six months ago. That was when Jed Rivers and a party of prospectors headed that way, thinking there might be gold in the valley. Yeah, came hightailing back out of there faster than they went in. Indians? Not just redskins, Apache Indians, which same are plain poison. I had heard that a long time ago, the valley used to be sacred to the Apaches. But I thought as the country became settled, they moved further back into the mountains. <laughs> That's what Jed thought. That's why he went there. But he sure enough found out different. You should have heard him when he got back. He said him and his pards never did travel so fast as he did that time, making themselves scarce. How could they be sure there were Indians in the valley? They seen them. They even brought back some of the arrows them redskins shot at them. I see. No, stranger, them coolies ain't in Apache Valley. Or if that's where they went, they're done for by now. You know, I've been doing some wondering myself. Yes? I've been wondering if them coolies that disappeared didn't do that same a purpose. What do you mean, Sheriff? Well, look at it this way. Who'd have any reason for making them prisoners or any such thing? What in the name of heaven would you do with them if you had them? <laughs> Don't ask me. The more I try to figure it, the more I think the only ones that disappeared was ones that wanted to. Yeah? They most likely got tired of working. They likely slipped away, figuring that they'd have a heap easier time of living off the country. That still doesn't explain why nothing's been seen of them. Oh, shucks, that's easy. They was brought here on contract. The contracts was made by the railroads, by them, uh, uh, what do you call them, Brad? Tongs. Yeah, that's what I was trying to think of, tongs. And I suppose they figured they'd better make themselves scarce of the tongs they belong to and make it hot for them. That's possible. However, hey, what, what's, what's the fuss? Well, that's Dick McCloud that? from the railroad camp. Yeah. What hey, you? Karen. What's the matter, Dick? You got to come over to the camp right away. What's happened? Half a dozen more of them coolies are cleared out. That's what's happened. Well, what and if you don't find what's become of them, there's going to be the devil to pay. With the information he had gathered in town, the Lone Ranger returned to the place where he had concealed his great horse, Silver, mounted and raced across country to the well-hidden camp where Tonto was waiting. Oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh. Tonto. Yeah, me here. I learned a little more in Stillwater, Kimosabe. What's that? In the first place, more Chinese laborers have disappeared. The man from the railroad camp just reported it to the sheriff. Mm, that heap bad. We've got to learn where they're going. This makes more than 20. Ah. Uh. The sheriff seems to think they're men who are running away on purpose. He believes they've simply gotten tired of working. Oh, him wrong. He must be. Those men couldn't live off the land here in the West. They'd be completely lost. They haven't had the experience. Not right. I learned another thing, too. The people in town are convinced there are Indians in Apache Valley. No. Me not think that. Tonto's Indian friend tell me them gone. They've seen Indians there, however. Oh, that's plenty strange. The valley's always had a bad name. In the old days, no white dared enter it. That's right. But I'd hoped if your Indian friends were telling you the truth, all that had been changed by now. Uh. And yet, if the whites are still afraid to enter Apache Valley, it may help us. What you mean? Just this. The Chinese who have disappeared must have gone somewhere. But this whole district has been searched, except for the valley. You think them there? I don't know. They've been made prisoners and taken there. I haven't any idea why it was done. Uh -huh. And if they deserted and went to the valley by themselves, I still can't see a reason. From what I've been told, it wouldn't provide a very good living. Mm, that's right. It contains nothing but trees and rocks, scarcely any open country that could be cultivated. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, Tonto, that's where we're going. We right now? As soon as I've taken all this disguise and put on my mask. Let me help take off disguise. Thanks. Kimasabe, Apache Valley may mean death to whites that go inside. What's more, may hold no clue to the disappearance of those Chinese. Uh, but we're going to try to solve its mystery if we have to risk our necks to do it. Get our things together. We're leaving at once. Although the masked man and Tonto urged their mounts to their greatest speed, it was nightfall before they reached the mouth of Apache Valley. They made camp just inside its boundaries, and in the morning saddled again and prepared to go forward. But before they mounted, a feathered shaft struck the trunk of a tree not a foot from the Lone Ranger. Tonto, what was that? You look. It. Arrow. An arrow. Huh? Hey, two. Lopas, Roxy, Manixa. Now, look. 
That was an Indian, Tonto. Could you understand what he said? Him say, leave valley or get killed. A warning. We go get him? We can't catch him, Tonto. He aimed at us from the ledge of that cliff up there. By the time we found a way to get up there, he'd be gone. That's what he must have been banking on. Uh, this proves your friends were wrong, though, Tonto. There are Indians here. That's right. We've been given a warning and a chance to turn back and escape. I have an idea that if we continue, we won't get another chance. The next time, they'll attempt our lives. Maybe you're right. You'd rather leave, Tonto. There's still time. No. Tonto not afraid. Me? Me go where white friend go. Good for you, Tonto. Then forward it is. We'll meet trouble when we have to. Steady, Silver. Yep. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. On they rode into the valley. The cliffs which hemmed it in were so high that the sunlight penetrated for only a few hours in the middle of the day. The trail led through a dense forest, and underfoot the going was rough and treacherous. Tonto, the more I see of this valley, the more I wonder why anyone would want to come here. You stop! Oh, Scott! Oh, 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 oh. oh Scott! Oh. What is it, Kimosabe? You look. There. Yes? Them dig pit. You see? Look where branch stick up. That's what it is, Tonto. It must be. Wait. I'm going to have a look. Come here. Uh-huh. Oh, there. Heap big hole. Covered first with branches, then with dirt and leaves. And look down there on the bottom. Oh. Stakes sharpened to a point. We'd fallen in there with our horses, and those stakes might have killed us. Mm, that's right. Tonto, listen to me. Uh-huh. We can't go on this way. We can't always be dodging their efforts to get us. Sooner or later, they may succeed. Mm, that's right. Unless we turn the tables on them. Unless, instead of being killed, we capture them. You got plan? I believe I have, Tonto. Not good. It's getting dark again. We'll soon have to make camp for the night. Uh. And that's when we'll be in the greatest danger. The night will hide the Indians. Even if one of us keeps watch while the other sleeps, we can't be sure of safety. What? What plan you got? First, let's make camp. We've gone far enough for the day. I think that place over there will do very well. Uh. Then, Tonto, I'll explain what I have in mind. The Lone Ranger outlined his plan to Tonto as they ate their evening meal. When night had fallen, they placed their blanket rolls close to the dying embers of the fire. Then the masked man and the Indian slipped away from the camp and into the cover of a small clump of trees. Tato, do you think anyone could have seen us leave our camp? No. Them not see us. I hope not. We got away all right. Our plan should work. I think those blankets look enough like men sleeping to fool almost anyone. Huh. Quiet. What you'll hear? Nothing, I guess. For a moment, I thought I heard steps over there, but I must have been mistaken. Uh. Of course, they may not attack at all. We may have made our plans for nothing. I doubt it, however. They're too anxious to get rid of us to let a night pass without some attempt on our lives. We wait. Them come by and by. Yes. What that? You see something? There. Black shadow. There, other black shadow. Shadows move. Indians. Huh? I'm working directly toward the spot where they think we're sleeping. No, what we do? Let them get a little closer, Tonto. We don't want to make a move before we're sure all of them are on hand. Tonto only see two color. That's all I can see. Them go now. All right, Kimasami. Come. Those redskins are going to get the surprise of their lives. Quietly, though. Mm, me not make noise. At them, Tonto. Me get them. Stand where you are. Tonto, that way. Take that one. I'll get this fellow. Uh, Hold on. There, I've got you. Bless you. What? Let me go, I say. Let me go. Tonto, have you got that fellow? Me got him. And take a look at him. These men are dressed like Indians. They shot at us with arrows. But, Tonto, they're no more Indians than I am. They're white. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to 
continue our story. When the Lone Ranger discovered that the men who had attacked him and Tonto were not Apaches, but white men, he made them prisoners. Then he gave Tonto some instructions, and early the next morning, the Indian left the camp. We see the masked man now as he walks toward the outlaws. You there. Your name is Rio, isn't it? What if it is? And you call yourself Windy? A lot of good it'll do to know our names. I think I've heard those names before. If I'm not mistaken, both of you are wanted for crimes in quite a few different places. Yeah? It would be easy to find out. Just what are you getting at? Justice. Either you'll talk, either you'll tell me what's behind all this, or be given to the law. Blast it, you've been asking us questions all night. We've told you before you won't get nothing out of us, and we're telling you again, so quit it. You can keep at us from now till a year from now, but you won't get no answer except what we've given you. Perhaps I'd better use some persuasion. <laughs> You think we don't savvy who you are? You know me? We know as much about you as anybody does. Yes? You're the fella they call a Lone Ranger. We've known it ever since you headed for the valley. Why don't you get sense? Clear out while you can still save your hides. I'm telling you, you ain't got no more chance of getting a boss than a rabbit with a lobo wolf. Sure, there's things going on in this valley. Big things. The boss is playing for big stakes, and he's got things planned so he'll win. He's the slickest customer I ever met up with, bar nobody. You won't bust up his game, and neither will the next fellow that comes nosing around, or even the next after him. Now just throw your bedrolls across your horses, head south, and make tracks for home. Take it from me, that's the smartest thing you can do. I'll just... What was that? There. We told you we had pards nearby. I'll find out what... Who? Oh, the mask man! They got the mask man! Tunnel! Serves them right. Tunnel! What matter? Who fired gun? What man? What? Oh, you get shot. Tonto, listen. Uh, I'm afraid this means we'll have to turn back. We can't go on after this. Oh, you plenty bad hurt. Could you lift me to your saddle, Kimosabe? Oh, Tonto, do that. <laughs> we warned you, mister. You can't say we didn't. Rio, call out for the boys. No. You keep still. You make noise. Me shoot you. Careful, Wendy. The redskin means just what he says. Call the horses, Tonto. Here, Silver. Here, Scout. Now, now give, me, give me your hand. Uh, here. There. I'll ride with you, Tonto. You'll be able to hold me in the saddle. Now, help me up. There. Steady, Scout. Uh, all right, Tonto. Uh, up with you. Help <laughs> me up. Get clear of the valley, mister. Another dose of lead will just about be your finish. We're leaving. But remember this? Yeah. When this wound is well, we'll be back. Let's go, Tonto. Follow along, Silver, old fellow. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode back the way they had come, the Indian supporting the weight of his white friend. But they had covered less than a mile when the masked man straightened in the saddle and Tonto reined up. Oh, Scout. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> We tricked them, Tonto. They really believed I'd been shot. I uh, fooled them plenty. Here, Silver. You know what to do, Tonto? Uh, Hit me right back to town. Yes, and keep the blankets across the saddle in front of you. Ride fast so any guards who may be posted in the valley won't have a chance to discover I'm not with you. Hold on to the blankets as though you were keeping me in the saddle. Tonto, do that. They may notice that Silver isn't following, but that can't be helped. They think of it at all, they likely decide Silver broke away. Ah. Uh. When you reach town, Kimasabi, tell what we've discovered. Tell the law whites have been masquerading as Indians. Then the law will have to act. Me make posse come. I'm depending on you, Tonto. I'll allow five days for you to reach town and get back. When you get here, do your best to see that no one escapes to give his leader warning. Ah, uh, but how me find you? There'll be some way for me to send you a signal, Tonto. What it'll be, I won't know until I've looked over the ground. You can depend on it, however. Uh. But now I've got to get back to where we left Rio and Windy. Them breakway heap quick. Yes. I made the knots and the ropes that bind them loose enough so they can free themselves when they try. The first thing that they'll do when they get free is to report to their leader that we're on our way out of the valley. Uh, what they won't know, however, is that I'll be trailing them to their leader's headquarters. Uh, uh, that plenty clever. Now on your way, Kimosabe. And be back in five days. Let me do that. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. It did not take long for Rio and Wendy to undo the ropes that bound them. They took to the saddle and spurred their mounts northward, deeper into Apache Valley. 
Finally, they left the valley behind them and followed a narrow winding trail that opened on a smaller valley. On they rode, and at last drew rein before the door of a ramshackle office. Whoa, whoa, there, whoa. There. Whoa. Come on, Wendy. Get him with you. Boss. Hi there, boss. You inside? That's you, Leo. Me and Wendy, Mr. Brady. Come on in. Well, what have you got to report? The job's done, boss. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Brady, the mast pulling that engine front of his or hightailing out of the valley so fast you can't see him for dust. What happened? Gosh, Mr. Brady, that's something I ain't sure about. Uh -huh. For a fact, I ain't. One of the other boys really done the trick. Which one it was, I couldn't tell you. I don't understand. Well, it was this way, boss. The masked hombre and the redskin got by all the other fellows but us. Yes? And, uh, and then they sort of got us in a bad fix. They were slick, Mr. Brady. They tricked us fair and proper. We figured they was wrapped in their blankets asleep. But when we sneaked up on them, they come from behind some trees and got the drop on us. Then they tied us up and tried to make us talk. But we didn't, Mr. Brady. We never said a word. I think you both understand what had happened to you if you ever did. Now then, they got the drop on you. How'd you get the best of them? Well, that's what I was saying. We didn't. It was one of the other fellows, I reckon, that must have followed after him. He drilled a masked fellow from cover, but we never got a look at him. I guess he never seen us, neither. That's funny. Oh, I don't know. Me and Wendy was sitting down, tied again a tree. The mask hombre was standing up. Whoever done the shooting most likely couldn't see where we was at. We couldn't yell out on account of the redskin. Then when the redskin and the mask man lit out, this other fellow likely didn't stay around to do any investigating. What he'd done was probably follow after him to see they kept on going. That's what he should have done. Sure. I don't believe with a lone ranger all the way we have much to worry about. If he failed... There's certainly no one else around this part of the country to trouble us. It's just barely possible that the law might get here. If it did, there wouldn't be a coolie to be found. <laughs> no? Well, I don't savvy what you mean. Never mind. You can take my word for it. Not sure enough. The masked man had followed the two outlaws to the secret inner valley. During the five days that followed, he investigated the situation and made several interesting discoveries. Then, on the fifth day, Brady called Pete to his office. You sent for me, Mr. Brady? Got more work for you to do, Pete. Yeah? Another trip outside. Oh, I get you. More coolies, eh? Exactly. With the new tunnels we've opened, we can double the number of workmen. I want more coolies within a week. You'll get them. How many men can I take? As many as you'll need. Just so there are enough left to keep the coolies we've got in line. How have they been behaving, making trouble? And them that have have been sorry for it. <laughs> I imagine they have. Very well, choose your men and get started. Sure thing. I'll get red and lie. You'll get no one. A masked man. What? Keep your hands from your guns. You, Rio and Wendy, the blasted fools, told me you were shot. That you'd left the valley. You see, I haven't. What's more, Brady... I've been around for the last five days. Spying on us. Getting evidence that will see you and your men hung. I think not. You kidnapped Chinese laborers working for the railroad and made slaves of them. You've kept them here as prisoners, forced them to mine gold on which you have no legal claim. Uh -huh. You were clever, Brady. Free labor, a rich vein. Men packing the gold you took out across the border. Other men keeping intruders from the valley. But now you're finished. That's what you think. I know what I'm talking about. Right now the law is in the valley. Tonto brought it here. Enough law to handle you and your old organization. So you think you got me trapped? You are. And what if those coolies disappear? What if the mine can't be found? <laughs> then what? What'll the law do to me then? That won't happen. No? You think it won't? You think I wasn't ready for just this? You said I was clever. Now I'll show you just how clever I really am. Boss, what are you doing? Put out that match. Ah, it's lit. The fuse is lit. <laughs> try and stop it. Just try. <laughs> you thought you had me beat. Why, you fool. There hasn't been an hour since I opened this mine that I wasn't prepared. Now bring on your law. I'll laugh in its face. But, boss, that fuse... I keep my own secret feet. Stranger, I planted enough blasting powder at that mine to blow out the side of a mountain. That fuse leads right to it. And in just about ten minutes, there won't be enough left of the mine or the men in it to send me to jail for a day. We'll see. <laughs> Wait. There. <laughs> Gone. Mine, coolies, evidence and all. 
Gone, every bit of it. Brady, look out of the window. Good Lord. But what? What? How? The mine wasn't even touched. It can't be. I planted that blasting powder myself. Something's going wrong. You I... planted the blasting powder, Brady, but I changed it. Why? Stand back. Yes, changed it, Brady. And the blast you prepared to get rid of the evidence is bringing the law here this minute. It's a signal Tal has been waiting for. We were tricked. I'll show you. Ah, my head. Don't make another try for a gun. That means you too, Pete. Come here, footman. This way, Tano. Tano, come. Let me go. Let me out of here. Why, here's your prisoner, Sheriff. I'll take care of the skunks. Tano, I didn't expect you here so soon. Um, me pine trail. Right this way when we, we hear blast. Sheriff, you'll find all the evidence you need right at hand. And mine is in the face of that far cliff. The Chinese who disappeared are all there. And I think that when Pete tells the rest of Brady's gang that their leader not only planned to blow up the Chinese in the mine, but his own men who were inside as well, they'll testify plenty. I got my posse round him up right now. Oh, wait, Sheriff. Let me go. I'll pay you. I'll make you rich. I'll give you all the gold you can ever spend. Just let me go, that's all. You can't give me a blame, sailor. Uh, but listen. You've got to listen. Just hear me out. Shut up. No, wait. All right, then. Keep on talking, you polecat. Talk all you remind to. Because when you're hanging from a tree, you'll stop talking sudden and complete. I'll sail The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>